If you have watched one of our previous videos here on our YouTube channel and you have always wondered why am I actually using a Prezor or the Geophone, the Ambient Hydrophone or why do I have the Sennheiser MKH8040 and the reason is frequency. And if you are a sound designer or a music producer, you may have an idea what I'm about to show you. But if you are completely new to sound and you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, let me tell you that field recording is not just being out there recording sounds. It's like being on a treasure hunt. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next part of this video. So first off, I have Audition open just to give you an example how the original sound sounds like and also looks like. And that's very important. Here, this one, for example, this is the electromagnetic fields. And you already see this huge red and this is the spectrogram of the file. And we all know that our human earrings, everything what is here above 20,000 hertz is something that we can't hear anymore. And we have a little friend here. Our kitty cat, hi, it's part of it. You know, we are in Turkey right now and sometimes we just keep the, the door open and then we foster this little kid. <laughs> okay, back to the sound. Now we, I want you to listen to the original sound really quick. This is the original sound and later on in a different program, we can play around with it. And what I'm going to show you, if you have never heard about anything like this, it will really blow your mind. So these are the electromagnetic fields. Now let's just go back to the geophone and I'm going to take her out really quick. Hop. Let's go to the geophone and this sound I just recorded the other day on a pier here in Bodrum at the harbor. And if you listen to this one, It's a very squeaky peer. And here when we pull out the spectrogram, everything is like in the low end. It's like kind of very dark sounding. And you can do so much with this file. It is, it is incredible. Now let's listen to the toilet flush. And this is something very interesting. This microphone, the Sennheiser MKH-804, is able to pick up sounds up to 50,000 hertz if you look at the specification on the official Sennheiser website. But when I recorded this toilet flush, you can see that everything is going above 70,000 hertz. So if you look into microphones and you read, oh, I can record frequency between 20, 30 and 20,000 hertz, some of these microphones are actually able to pick up sounds that go above 50,000 hertz. And again, if you, don't know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna get to it, don't worry. It, it's, it's fantastic. And for me, it was somebody who is not a professional sound designer or music producer. When I discovered this, I was just, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Now listening to the toilet flush. Just a regular toilet flush. And there's one thing that also I wanna mention there are people who tell me Marcel toilet flush 48, 24 kilohertz is totally enough. And this is something where I say, no, it's not. Because yes, for post-production or animation, 48 is totally okay. But what is, if I do it, I would cut off, not only everything is above 48,000 hertz, I also cut off a complete different customer base. Sound designer, music producer, what is a huge market? I would cut them off because if they read in my description 48 kilohertz, they're gone. So I want to provide high quality sounds. And if you have a microphone like this, then you can provide sounds that are above. But again, you might think, what is he talking about? And I'm going to get there. Don't worry. The hydrophone itself is, it, it is fantastic. Yes, it's also an expensive piece of equipment but it's a hydrophone, so I recorded these underwater sounds. This is like a, a goggle, like an underwater goggle, when the water goes into a little hole and then it comes up. Listen to this. Wow. 
wow. And this is so cool. A sound designer right now is probably, whoa, if I can pitch this down. Yes, exactly. You can pitch it down to create these monster sounds. But then you pitch down the original sound. And that's what we don't want to do. We do even more. And for this, we're using a program called Iris 2. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next part of the video. I have Iris 2 open. It's a program from Isotope. It's already five years old, four years old. So you're gonna find a lot of tutorials on YouTube about Iris 2. So now you see here, I have all my samples loaded. Still, they just look like regular files. But now let's start with the good stuff. I can actually play all files together. Just listen to this. You hear that? This alone is incredible, but I'm playing the original files just pitched down and pitched up. Because here, in this part, we can change the root note of our keyboard. I'm using right now the launch key mini to play these notes. But let's just open one of these samples. Here we go. And when you see here on the left side, this is where our frequency is. Now when I turn this to the right, this is where the magic happens. We have all these layers of sounds, all this frequency, and each one of these frequency is a complete new sound. So if I wanna say, all right, I wanna play just this part here. Now what we're doing is, you see that? We're playing only this part. So we just have this piece of the whole sound file that we're playing. And if we change the root note, or we go higher, I mean lower. <laughs> now we go higher. So if you have ever wondered how people create these magic element sounds, this is how they do it. They're using these kind of programs, right? So you're not just using the original sound to manipulate. You can also manipulate the sound in the sound. It's just, it is fantastic. But we don't stop here. Now imagine we want this part too. Or here. Or we do circles. Like this. And then we do here a little bit. And what happens when we play this? Wow. Let's change the note. Make it a little bit more robotic. I've got goosebumps when I play this stuff. So let's keep this, but what we're doing is we just, you know, make this a little longer. Because later, what we're doing, we want to play all files together. So these are the electromagnetic fields. Now let's head over to the geophone. The geophone is more low, right? Let's play this. Oh, first of course we have to single. That's so cool about you can, you can even have it all play together or you single the track and then you can just... Oh. You hear this? When you listen with headphones, you get this... It's kind of like sub sound, sub zero, like... Well, let's just keep one note and we change the root note. Oh, now it's getting dark. So if you have ever wondered how to cre recreate these cool sounds that are you know, underwater, dark, ooh, this is kind of this stuff that the sound designer is doing, or music producers, not only sound design, let's just take this part, that part. And what I'm doing right now, this is cool when you use um, Isotope RX, you can not only play these files, you can also export these parts that I just selected. So this is great if you want to create a complete new instrument, then you can create these different notes in the file. This is insane. Let's play this. Now it's a little more mystic. And here in the master effects, that's where you can change the chorus, the reverb. So you can do so much things just in Iris, but if you want to use Ableton, you have so much more.
Now let's hop over to the toilet flush. Wow, just to give you an idea where we are here, I can do it like this. And then you have the frequency together with the file. And we do the same play. Let's say we want to create this part. We want to take out something here, 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 here. But I think you, you get the idea, right? That's This is a toilet flush. Doesn't sound like a toilet flush at all, right? Then if that's the that's the thing. You This is so cool if you have microphones that can pick up these sounds and the I think the best microphone to record sounds in the highest frequency range is the Sunken CO100. It's a two and a half thousand dollar microphone, but I have a dream. Maybe someday I'm gonna buy it because I then to recreate monster sounds, dinosaurs, people using these kind of microphones, and then they record lions. They go into the jungle and record like these monkey sounds. And if you have a microphone that can pick up all these sounds or bats, and you have these higher frequency ranges, it's fantastic. Okay, now let's head over to the underwater sound. And now, what do you think how my name sounds like? Let's write my name in here. M. R. A. Now we do R. The C. E. It's so cool what you can do. Oh, the E looks nice. And now L. Marcel. Let's see how Marcel sounds like underwater. First we have to silence it. So this is how Marcel sounds like. Isn't it so cool what you can do? Wow, and now let's play all together. Just for the fun. You see we can we see all the files together. And now let's play it all together. It's totally abstract. It's totally abstract. I really hope I could show you the power of the recording device and it gives you an idea why I record these sounds for music producers, sound engineers and sound designers. I do believe that sound is pretty much underappreciated by the mainstream and with our YouTube channel we hope that we can shine a little bit more light on sound but we also want to inspire you to get out and record your own sounds either for you or for creating sound libraries for others. That's all up to you. But I'm curious, do you think that sound is pretty much underappreciated by the mainstream or is sound something that's completely new to you and you had absolutely no idea what you can do with sound? So please leave me a comment down below. I'm always happy to see your comments. I'm always happy to respond to comments because this is what YouTube is all about for me. We are there for you and we hope that you are there for us. Thank you so much for watching and we really hope to see you in our next video.